Hi guys, welcome back to my colourful country life. So Artex have sent me over a set of acrylic markers to play around with and these are the 60 set of acrylic markers. Now they do come in this lovely sturdy box which reminds me a bit of their pencil box actually. Um, Artex do do some really lovely packaging. Um, so it says on the front here we have 60 colours, a water based and brush tip, bright and opaque available on different surfaces so they'll work on a multitude of different surfaces actually while i mentioned that they did also include a little easter gift in their package for me um they have sent me a couple of these little wooden ornaments of the easter bunny and you can see here that it comes with a little stand as well so it can sit up um, as well as some of these little plastic easter eggs here as well to decorate so the acrylic markers um, it should work well on the wood and the plastic as well. I need to get myself one of those um, wooden trees. You know those, is it MDF? Is that what I'm thinking of? I can't think straight today. There's so much going on right now. Um, there's little wooden trees. I think I've seen them at Kmart and you can put your decorations on them. I need to get one of them to put on my desk. Um, so they do say the markers work well on other surfaces and I'm pretty sure that also includes fabric. Personally, I'm not likely to use them on anything other than my colouring pages. My kids may borrow them for their own craft projects at some point though. Specifically my daughter, she um, does get caught rifling through my drawers very often to rifle through my supplies. Um, saying that though, I think it'd be really fun to colour one of these bunnies, so we may do that at the end of the video. Um, anyway, back to our markers. I do get distracted, don't I? So if we flip this box over... There is a colour swatch on the back, which will give us a rough idea of what colours we can expect in the box. So this is our colour range and there are two sets. This one here is set 60A. There is also a 60B, which is their anime set. Now, from what I can see on their website, the B set of anime colours is more of a pastel set this one is more regular colors but there are some other interesting things in here i have had a quick sticky beak in this box already and it looks like it has a nice mix of colors and at first glance i could see some uh fluorescent tones some neon colors which is exciting some pastel shades some metallics which is always useful and of course beautiful bright colors too so i can't wait to swatch these out in a minute i actually haven't tried them yet so i'm really excited to see the colors so on top here we have um we have a thank you card here and just has their contact details and all their social media links on there as well um so we also have a couple of sheets of stickers we've got these little circular ones and then these big rectangular ones i like these circular ones they actually look like they fit perfectly on the bottom of our markers so let's have a closer look at one of these markers i'll pick this one up here Okay, so we have we have Artex written here on the cap, A for Artex here on the top, uh, recap after use, it basically just says it's a brush marker, um, brush tip with high adhesion, Artex acrylic marker. And we don't have any uh, names or numbers on here, but we do have the stickers so we can do it ourselves. Now, I won't be storing my markers in this package, as you can see they kind of wobble around a little bit so if you have got the Artex pencils it's a little bit like um, the setup of that box so they do have a bit of a wobble to them um, now I have an acrylic stand on my desk where I can lay my markers horizontally so I'll be moving mine into there um, you can also purchase marker pencil cases so you can lay your markers horizontally in your pencil cases too so these little circles are going to be perfect so I'll be able to see the color number um, as they're laying down I wonder if they'll fit on that side too yeah I think they will so you could put it on the cap if you want the cap to stick out or you've also got room on the end I think I'm going to stick mine on the end and if you are um, if you are going to store them in this box and you stick them on this end you'll be able to see it really clearly so you can pick up the right pencil and i can also see that they're in the same color order here as they are in the box which is very helpful i love to see it i love some good organization here um the rectangle stickers i'm probably not going to use them um i mean i could always 
put them on just as an extra sticker. Um, yeah, look, I'm probably not going to use them. If you store your markers in a container, a bit like, hang on, a bit like my jelly rolls over here. <laughs> if you store them in a container like that, um, the, sticking the stickers on the barrel on the side here might help you when you're flicking through um, to find the right colour, but I don't think I'm going to use them today. I think I'm going to stick this circle stickers on. I might do that now so I don't get any of the colours mixed up when we start swatching. And I think I may need some tweezers so my fingers can get these in the right spot. One second. Okay, hopefully I can get these centered. Otherwise, it is really going to bug my OCD. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, you know what? As long as I get it on there. Okay, so they are all numbered now. That was very time consuming um, and very fiddly as well. So it took me about, I think, 12 minutes to get all those stickers on and they aren't straight. This one I'm going to have to fix up. This one is bugging me. Um, this one here, I noticed that you can't actually see very well. It does have it on there. I can faintly see it says C19, but you can't see it very well. So what I'm going to end up doing is sticking this sticker on because you can read the number a little bit better um, just so I can see the number clearer. Now Artex are starting to sell um, their acrylic markers as open stock. That's on their website. I don't know if that's going to be available on Amazon in the future but on their website you can start to purchase these open stock. Not all um, markers, not all the colours are up there at the moment. They are adding to them. Um, you do have a minimum purchase of five uh, markers for delivery. So it can be any five colours, but you need to order five at a time of the single pens. So like I mentioned before, these are brush tips. Now, the only other brush tip acrylic paint markers I own are actually the Artex SimpTap markers, which I absolutely love. Um, I have used those brush tip acrylic markers on my rainbow fish page in Mythic World. One second, I'll just grab the book to show you. Okay, let's just move this to the side. So, where are we? Here, this, all this gold detailing on our rainbow serpent. Rainbow serpent? I said rainbow fish. It's the rainbow serpent page. Um, all the gold detailing you can see on the page. That was the Artex SimpTap acrylic marker. So it was a gold metallic. Um, so you can use them to fill in a particular element. Now I've also used them to create a background in small victories, which I will grab. It is here somewhere. Okay, so this is the page here. So for the background on this page, I did use the SimpTap acrylic paint markers from Artex to create this background. So they're also the brush tips, like I just said. Um, so I do use my acrylic markers a fair bit. Now I tend to use fine tips for covering black lines. Um, personally, I find it a bit difficult to get a thin, fine line with the brush tips, but I do love brush tips for bigger areas. So I actually prefer the brush tip to the felt tip that Poskas have. Um, it just has that little point at the end and 
it is a little bit more flexible so i find it a little bit easier to lay down the color and get into little spaces as well um and if you have seen my worlds within worlds completed book flip through there were a few posca backgrounds in that book um which you could use these markers to create as well now acrylic markers are no different to your acrylic paints they just come in this handy tool ready to go uh, whereas with tube acrylics or like the plastic bottles i've got one here um you need a paintbrush or another tool to utilize them but with your markers it comes in the tool already um, and you can use your markers in the same way you can blend them to make new colors um, you can lighten shades you can make your own gradients and we might check that technique out a little bit later um, what I'm thinking we may test these out in one of my coloring books today I do want to see how well they cover black lines but I also want to try using them for basing I think as well so not just backgrounds or coloring full elements I am in my basing era at the moment or era for the non-Aussies we've just had Taylor Swift over here and I'm so used to hearing people say errors tour um now instead of the Aussie way of saying era <laughs> and like like I said before we do um have the ability to blend and also um create gradients and stuff with them as well so it might be nice and fun to do some basing as well before we do that though let's swatch out these beautiful colors now um, these do not actually need any activation. They're ready to go straight from the box. There's no tapping. There's no shaking. There's no pushing on the tip. They're all ready to go. So I have my swatch chart here. And I've already popped in the marker numbers. And as usual, it's just plain copy paper. And I've just got my notebook underneath for cushioning. That is my SimpTap markers up the top here. So that is the one I use to create the background. And that is the gold metallic I use in Mythic World. So um, we're going to use our 60 colors. And just make sure that's all on the screen. Um, and swatch them down here. So I will zoom you in for this. I'm thinking maybe I might color... Um, down the rows this way i'm left-handed so i don't want to go this way and smudge it they do dry pretty quickly um so we might go across or go down from right to left so i don't smudge it all over my page though so i'll just zoom you guys in
Okay guys, this is our colour selection here and they have a really good colour selection. I am just noticing we don't really have much in the red section. These three are gorgeous and I think they'd make a really good combination and they'd also go really well with this blue, even this red as well. These colours here all on one page would look beautiful and this would be a beautiful colour for a sky if you wanted to do just a uh, plain acrylic background for the sky. Um, as I said, you can use them um, and blend them with, so you've got the white here, you could blend it and make a lighter colour, so you can make a little gradient there with just the one marker. Um, we do have lots of lighter pastel colours, so you don't really need to blend them so much, but you could lighten them with the white or add the black to darken them up. We even have some metallic colours here. So down here we've got the silver and the gold and these ones here are they showing up these four here are metallic as well they kind of have this one has a bit of a silver glitter to it i don't know if that's showing on the camera these pens were super juicy especially this last row the um the paint was just sort of almost even dripping out i was barely touching the paper as i did all these swatches like barely touching it and they just flowed out so juicy, so opaque, and zero pressure. Like I said, I was barely touching the paper, which is really good. I find that the same thing with the um, Simptap as well. You barely need to touch the paper, and you get this really juicy, opaque flow as well. No skipping or anything like that. Um, and we've got these fluoro colors too, which are really fun. Now, um, so like I said, I use these for backgrounds. So you could use any of these colors just alone for their backgrounds. The black's a really nice one as well. Um, even these grays here. Actually, that one's a really pretty color. This sort of um, greeny gray. That would make a really nice background too. Um, so you could use these as a background. You could actually use them with a water brush um, and paint them as if you would like a watercolor paint, even though it's an acrylic paint, you add the water to it to water it down a little bit, use your water brush. Um, maybe if you're doing like a wall, um, like if you think of the Lost Property Office that I just did a Rooms of Wonder, so you can get darker shadowy sections and then lighter sections as well. So you could do something like that. Now let's just grab a book, I think. Okay, I'm just gonna zoom you out a little bit here. And move this across to the side and I'm going to grab, I have a second copy of Worlds Within Worlds that I know I will never finish because I've already finished one. This is my second copy that I bought because I needed to recreate that final page because I lost the footage and that one I recreated too because the original dollhouse I didn't do as a video. So what we might do is... I need to make some more space on my desk. I will have to move this out of the way. Sorry, guys. I was trying to leave it there so you can still see the colours. Um, let's find something. I'm just going to use it. Hmm. I want to see if the white can colour lines very, very well. So what can I use it on? Um, let's try this page. So what I'm going to do is use the white to go around the edges of this. I think we'll do the edges of this. Let's go over it with the white and see how well it blacks out those lines. Or not blacks out the lines. The lines are already black, Karen. <laughs> white out the black lines. Let's see if it covers it. One second. All right, so I've grabbed zero, 0, which is the white. I'll move this over here now so you can see it. That's the white um, here. So I'm just going to go around the edges and look how caps fit on the end. I love it when they do that. Okay, so let's go through. Okay, so I am still seeing the black lines. Now, these are quite thick black lines, too. It actually goes on quite, um, I was going to say thin. It's not thin, it's flat. So it's quite smooth. It's not raised. Um, you know if you use, like, a white Posca or a Signo, 
you get that raised feel to it so that might need a couple of coats it has lightened it a bit so if you like just the lightened look it has lightened it but it might need a couple more coats to completely cover those lines um, now I think if we used an actual colored um, marker the pigment in the color would actually cover the lines better than a white would so for example if I cover um, when I am blacking out the lines with my tool outs, for example, if I use a white, you can still see the black lines. But when I use like the blues and the pinks, um, they cover it up and you can't see the black lines at all. So the colors will probably cover it more. And of course, when we do look at elements, our elements don't have a white line around them, like in real life. So um, you would want to color over that with pencil to the end anyway. So you may as well use a colored one. Um, so if you're going to do this blue, you could use like this light blue, for example, and do the edges. So then when you color the inside with your colored pencil, that blue would end up being your lightest color, which would be like a sky blue light. Let's try, that, see that's dry and it's not raised at all. Now, if I do a second coat, it will feel a bit raised. Let's do half of it just from here. That way we can see the difference. Okay. It is covering it a bit more. Probably need a third coat maybe to get it fully covered. Um, like I said, that is nice and flat. I'll test that in a minute. So it's going to probably be a little bit raised. Can we color over that? Let me just grab a pencil. Peach. Let's grab a blue. Um, Caribbean Sea or Caribbean Sea, PC 1103. So let's do this. Let me zoom you in. Okay, so hopefully you can see that a bit closer. So sometimes when I use a white Posca, when I go to colour over it with my pencil, I can feel it scratching off. It isn't scratching off with this one coat. It is covering over it. You can see here that's where there's just paper and then where it looks lighter is where the white is. So yeah, that does feel a little bit rougher and raised now with the second coat. Let's try to colour over that. And I do use a light pressure because if you press hard, you, you probably are going to scratch it off. So I can get that color over it. Obviously, it looks lighter than it does on the paper. But it is coloring on top of it quite well. Now, let's just have a look at our flower over here. Now, I was talking about how you can use these like you would an acrylic paint and um, create a gradient. So what we're going to do, I have my Karen Dash palette here and I'm going to use the smooth and shiny side. And I'm going to use these three colors because I absolutely love these colors. Actually, that one would work well too as a lighter color. Look at me, I always do my gradients <laughs> with so many different colours. One, two, three, four. They look really pretty together. Um, should we use all four? Why not? Why not? We're just having fun playing around here. Let's test it out. So what I'm going to do is um, scribble my markers directly onto my palette. And then I'm going to use my brush here. I'm using a water brush. I actually don't have much water in it, but... It should work um, and I'm gonna use that to pick up the paint and paint it on all right so we've got 18 17 C 17 and that's C 19 the one I need to put the rectangle sticker on 
So I'm just going to uh, move it to the side that way. I'll put that there and let's do this. So there's 18, 17, C17, and C19. So that's our gradient. Now let's get our water brush and pick up. I'm going to go with, let's try the darkest colour first and get that out of the way. Let's add it in here. So you could use it just like this as basing. So many different fun techniques you can use with these. You can do them with a dry paintbrush as well without adding any water. And I'm not even cleaning my brush off in between. Actually, I think I will clear it off before we get to that lighter colour. Gonna add in a bit more of the darker colour down here. Okay. and that's one of our gradients that we can do for a flower so that's just another way that you can use it other than your um just whiting whiting out your lines whiting out your lines i've got it right that time covering your black lines or doing backgrounds or coloring straight elements because of course you can just go straight in and color the element as it is um and then let's also see because i was saying that what are the colors? Let me try. Um, what have I got here? 32. Let me use 32 and see how well it covers the lines on this flower here. Yeah, so I think that covers it up a bit better than the white does if you're using these paint pens to outline. Um, now that is probably a little bit dark, so I could probably, let's see if we can blend that with the white. Where do I put my white, as you said? To get a lighter blue. Let's mix these together. And there's our lighter blue. So you can use them to create new colors too. So there's 60 in this set, but I mean, the amount of colors you can create is endless. And like I'm using, um, I'm using a water brush at the moment, but you don't need to add water. You can use just a dry paint brush, um, or you could just use them normally and color them straight on your page. But I thought I'd show you a few different ways of using them here. And let's just have a look on the other side. And you can see that there was no bleed through there. And I really, I really like how that turned out. Yeah, I really like that flower gradient. I want to go over to show you how, how pencil works over the top of it, but I don't want to color over the top of that one. So we're going to color over the top of this because I quite like that. Um, let's color over the top of this one. I don't know why I'm leaving that. It's not like I'm ever going to colour this page all over again, but I do like the way it looks. So let's, um, what have I got here? True Blue 903. Let's go over the top here. It's not scratching anything off at all. And we can add in some shadows. So 
So for those of you who like to base with alcohol markers, but you have books like this, which is double-sided and you can't use your alcohol markers um, because I'll bleed through it. You can use these instead because like I said, there's absolutely zero bleed through. And then you can come back in with your pencils as you would to add shadows with your alcohol markers too. I think that looks pretty good ignore that side <laughs> but I think that works pretty well and none of that um basing was scratched off at all either so um back to our swatches here so like I said before we do have a really good range especially the greens look how many greens we have even a metallic and a fluoro as well um so lots of colors to choose from we are a little bit low on the red tones um but we do have some really good earthy colours, some great background colours here. Um, not so much. The, we've got a few. Actually, these are good like skin tone colours. Um, these are our little pastel -y type tones. Um, there aren't that many of them. You'd probably need the 60B set for the pastel tones if you wanted just to colour the black lines. Um that way with the light colors otherwise you can do what i did before and add in some white but i personally find it hard to cover just the black lines with a brush tip i need a felt uh, not a felt tip a fine tip to do that um but great for backgrounds great for basing and good for blending and mixing so you can use them just like you would a normal acrylic paint um I think that's it. What else have I got to tell you? So purchase information will be down below in the description box. So they are selling on Amazon Australia at the moment for $89.99, which is about, what is it, $1.50 roughly per marker for the 60 set, which is quite reasonable if you compare that to the cost of uh, the Tuliart 24 sets, which I think are about $50 Australian, so for 24 markers. So I think that's pretty reasonable. You do get a good range and they are quite versatile um if there's anything that i didn't mention today that you would like to know let me know in the comments down below otherwise i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you had fun experimenting with me and i'll speak to you all very soon thank you so much bye for now guys i was just cleaning up and i accidentally tipped the bottom of the box upside down and noticed that the trays come out how exciting is that these turn them up this way so I probably still, like, I'm not going to store my markers in here. I'm putting them away at the moment in my acrylic organizer. But if you're working on a project and you have one of these on your desk, you can stick the pencils you're using in here instead. That'll keep them nice and handy instead of them rolling across your desk. These are actually handy little plastic containers. I'm going to hold on to these. So I just thought I would let you all know my little find.